If you give users permission to enter their time directly in QuickBooks, as you learned earlier in this chapter, they can fill in a timesheet in QuickBooks, enter time for a single activity, or use the built-in timer to keep track of time while they work. If you enter time for other people, filling in a timesheet is the easiest option. To enter time for one activity, on the home page, click Enter Time, and then choose Time Enter Single Activity. The dialog box sets the date to today. To choose a different day, click the calendar icon, and then click the date. You can also type the date in the box. The Name drop-down list contains names on the vendor list, employee list, and other names list. Choose the person who performs the work, then choose the customer or job that the work was performed for. QuickBooks automatically turns on the billable checkbox, which tells the program that you plan to add this time to an invoice later on. If you want to track time without adding it to an invoice, turn off the billable checkbox. For instance, you can turn off the checkbox if you want to see how many hours someone works on a job, but you charge the customer a fixed price for the work. The next step is to choose the service item for the work. If you want to add notes to describe the work completed, fill in the notes box. These notes will appear in the weekly timesheet and also on invoices you generate from time worked. If the person already performed the work, type the amount of time in the duration box. You can enter time as hours and minutes by typing a colon between them. For example, 4 hours and 30 minutes, like this. But you can also type a number with a decimal point. If I type 4.5, QuickBooks converts it to 4 hours and 30 minutes automatically. If you track time for yourself, you can use the stopwatch feature. However, the date does have to be set to today. Click Start to start the stopwatch. The seconds that pass appear to the right of the time box. If you want to pause the timer to take a break, for example, click Pause. Then you can click Start to restart timing or click Stop to stop the timing. You can restart timing later in the day by reopening this activity and clicking Start again. When you're done entering time for this activity, click Save and Close. To enter time in a weekly timesheet, click Enter Time and choose Use Weekly Timesheet. The fields you fill in are almost identical to the single activity, but they're arranged differently. Choose the name of the person at the top of the timesheet. The multiple names entry in this drop-down list is the key to creating a batch of timesheets all in one fell swoop. In the Select Employee, Vendor, or Other Name box, click each person you want to add to the batch and then click OK. The only limitation to batch timesheets is that the time entries must be identical for every person in the batch. In this example, I'll click Cancel and just choose Ted Timer. Choose the week by clicking the calendar icon and picking a day during that week. Then, in one row of the timesheet, you can choose the customer, job, service item, and fill in any notes. I'll add some carpentry and a note. Then you can type in the hours in cells in the timesheet. If I add 8 hours to a couple of days, you'll see that the weekly timesheet totals the hours for that service item for the week. And it also totals the times for each day of the week at the bottom. If the time is billable, leave the billable checkbox on. You have to fill in a separate row for each combination of customer, job, and service item. If the worker performs work for the same customers and service items, you can quickly copy a previous timesheet so you don't have to fill in all those fields. Display the week you want to fill in and click Copy Last Sheet. You can replace the current timesheet entries by clicking Yes, or if you want to add the entries from the previous timesheet, click No. When you're done, 
click Save and New to enter another weekly timesheet, or click Save and Close to save the timesheet and close the dialog box. These time records wait in QuickBooks until you're ready to add them to invoices or display them in time reports.